since Spacey's. Guess what, don't you know? It's the Sin Spacey Show. Guess what, don't you know? It's the Sin Spacey Show. Guess what, don't you know? It's the Sin Spacey Show. Guess what, don't you know? It's the Sin Spacey Show. Guess what, don't you know? It's the Sin Spacey Show! Welcome to episode number 26. Guess what, don't you know? It's the Sin Spacey Show! Guest starring Holly Kwan, two happy gamers, and the top loader. It's the Sin Spacey Show, everybody! Get a inverted welcome to Sin Spacey, and this is episode number 26 of the Sin Spacey Show. We are joined by. Just as the fucking countdown started, you pissed me as a bloody happy <laughs> Seriously, three, two, one. Oh, I've got to restart my computer. What the fuck? <laughs> we are joined by Top Loader, who has a game, and will soon be joined by Paulie Kwan, who needs to get a new PC on a stuff discount. Um, <laughs> Where's Paulie Kwan gone? Oh, he's, uh, in the- he's in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry guys, PC's acted up. You're clear in our spaces. <laughs> hey, that's a good invitation. You got his voice down. I thought he could do invitations. It looks like you've been doing your own practicing. He, he, can, he can now participate in the show from the chat. There we go. It's <laughs> like <laughs> so typing really fast. <laughs> All right, I'll just t- turn the mic down a little bit because I think I am coming out a little bit too clear now. <laughs> You are loud now, like my ear um, drums are going oh, welcome, right now. welcome to my world. Yeah, I was going to be too fair. <laughs> I've had to turn the volume down about three times just to get you to the right level. <laughs> uh, do you reckon we should just get into it without Paulie for the time yeah, being? It'll, it'll, we'll be here for a while, so it'll jump in. It's all good. So. All right, so... Uh, for those who have not yet ever seen an episode of the Synth Spacey Show, this is not a normal show. You've probably figured that out already by now. We get people fr- uh, who are fans of the show to tune in uh, and send in their questions by video. So, And then we discuss whatever the random question is. It doesn't have to be any particular topic as long as it's video gaming related. We're not going to be sitting here discussing uh, the solution to COVID and other you know, topical issues. We do that off air. <laughs> um, anyway, just put to put the THC emotes higher up. Um, okay, so what Yakabu's talking about there is that I did a tweet the other day saying the most used emoticons on my channel are this, and <laughs> now they're trying to get theirs to rank up on the on the most used. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, whatever floats your goat, Yakabu. Um, okay, so... We're going to get into question number one, and it has now become a tradition on the channel, uh, on the show, to have uh, Game Boy Bryant be the very first question. So, Game Boy Bryant, let me get this loaded up. What have you got for us, matey? You really are. Well, I'm out in the bad. I actually got this idea for this question here on the fly. Because you did frequent arcades back in the day, because that's where you first discovered Space Invaders. Have you ever witnessed anything strange? And I mean legitimately strange, like maybe somebody threw a temper tantrum or maybe somebody just walking around these arcades acting pretty weird. What was that? You. <laughs> anyway, I want to hear your answer to this question because I swear it gets bizarre by the day. Take care. Anyway, uh, we, I'll, I'll explain the question for you. Did you ever spot anything weird or strange happening in the arcades back in the day? I'll go first. Um, it was back before arcades became, I guess, regular, regular, um, mainstream. Mainstream, yeah, they were really rough and ready. I saw when I was about five or six at Cronulla, some some dude getting the absolute shit beaten out of him. So that was weird. I don't know if that that goes beyond weird, doesn't it? 
And I remember that was the first time I ever saw violence, like, on that level, as a kid. You sure you were playing Streets of Rage there, mate? That was a video <laughs> game, dude. <laughs> this predates, predates Streets of Rage. <laughs> uh, that's what inspired it, but they saw that, and then they said, we got a game out of this. Are we? Oh, hang on, we're joined by Paulie Quan, I think, again. Yeah, well, he, he's... Oh, he's back! Yeah, he's yeah but back. no audio. No audio. No audio. Really? Oh, yeah, you know, the audio's in. He just wasn't saying anything. Okay. <laughs> Never lost Craig. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> boys and girls, everyone say hello to Paulie Kwan. It's by the table. Uh, hang on. Are we are we interrupting you two? <laughs> it's all... This has just been chaotic, this, uh, this stream so far. <laughs> so, anyone... Got, uh, Top Light, have you got something for us when it comes to weird things going on in the arcade? Yeah, certainly. Um... Not back in the day, ironically. This actually happened a year ago at a time zone. So in Australia, we still have what's called a time zone. It's like, it's more, it's got arcades, it's got family entertainment type stuff as well for tickets. So about a year ago, I was in there and there's this guy, he must have been an Instagrammer or something because he's going around for like his team of photographers. And it's just like some, it's just like doing all these poses against the machines and he's like sitting there <laughs> and he was like doing all this freaking pose and stuff. And he had like a big biceps and he was like doing like all this type of stuff. I'm like, what is this guy doing? It's like, oh, is he, the problem was he was doing it on the games I wanted to play. And he's like, he was, he was there for ages and he's stuffing around. I'm like, man, I want to play the game. And he's sitting there on the ground. You know that? Do you know the Atari <laughs> Pong? Do you know the Atari Pong um, one in the time zone at the moment? Where it's, yeah, it's a, yeah, yeah. He was so posing he's still, in front of that. He was posing in front of that, and I wanted to play it because my son really likes it, and he was there for ages. I'm like, what's going on here? What who is this guy? What, what was what was the term we we said needs to come back? Uh, knucklehead? No, not knucklehead. What was it? Nuts, wasn't it? What, what? Numbnuts. 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 Yeah. Numb nuts. <laughs> yeah. Numb nuts suits him suits that guy so damn well, I think. <laughs> anyway, anyway, that was that was something I thought was completely weird. But back in the day, I can't really remember too I'm sure there was. I just can't remember that far back. But that was something definitely fresh in my mind that was very strange. So someone else might have an answer as well. So you know where the other battery went? So, are you right there to Happy Gamers? What are we so looking for? Batteries to... S oh, hello. <laughs> what are we looking for? Um, the battery for the camera. Are we having tech issues on our end too now, apparently. So, um, one of the batteries has decided that it wanted to stop working and that's why it just cut out. Not that it's dead, it just wanted to stop working, so... But no, we're good, we're good. But if she's going down under here, <laughs> nothing sus. <laughs> Oh my god, I almost lost the coffee. Oh my nothing god. Sus, I swear. No, nothing god, sus. By the way, go. thank you for the host, Maddie. No, it wasn't that I didn't notice. I just couldn't interrupt Top Loader because nothing can interrupt that. Um, and you thought I had issues. You thought I had issues. <laughs> my bad. Now, look around, look around here. I'm the one issues. Now that you've joined us again to, uh, to Happy Gamers, do you have any weird stories? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Quiet. Yes, I do. Um, it's like Dickie Knee down there, isn't it? <laughs> she, just, she found a piece of my my dinner from three days ago. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty bad. Ah, uh, yes. So I don't know if you guys remember. This may be my my age bracket thing. Uh, I think there's a little bit of discrepancy between us. But we used to have sleepovers in the arcades in Intensity and Time Zone, where you Ooh, would pay a fee. A yeah, and then you would be locked in from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. You would, yeah. <laughs> uh, they you basically play as many games as you want. They had sleeping bags, they had food and everything like that. It was really, the, really good. Sleep on the um, air, ho air hockey tables or something. I didn't think about that. That'd be a good idea. <laughs> Getting sweet, nothing's blown into your ear all night. Oh. Um, hey, what did you eat? Just whatever you could win. <laughs> you got the starving no skill kids in the corner like just trying to steal food from people my processes <laughs> oh, no, uh, so but did, um did you do that a, a couple oh, yeah, times yeah i did it all the time it was like literally every uh at least once a month we would do it and they'd do it once a month so i can would they, go can they bring that back i would so do that 
I wouldn't oh. do that. Well, you're not a kid anymore. If, if like, fuck, this is the in there with a locked in with a bunch of children. I'll be there with my with, with my so, I'll be there with my. Okay, maybe you're making it weird now. But I'll be there with my. So, I was going to say I'll be there with my Sonic pajamas, but you just killed that moment. <laughs> That's an I think you're. I think you're. Um. I think you're past the point. I think the line is a dot to you for that for that age bracket that they no, allow. No, 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 under 18s, they can piss off. They can go down the road and 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 sleep in. I don't know whatever else they're doing. No, do kids even care about arcades anymore? Yeah. If you go yeah. to Shopify now, there's, there's kids everywhere, man. London's still late. Honestly, like, they're always packed every time we go. And in saying that with the sleepover thing, I think you get a bunch of us together with, you know, alcohol and games. We'll scare them off. We'll scare them off. I think we're having a pretty good time with just like well, you and your friends. You don't have to be have kids. That's a good just idea. Your friends, you know what I mean? Like all your YouTuber friends or your freaking Twitch friends or whatever, you know? Your so just, just a reminder, we're answering the question, did you ever spot anything weird or strange happening in the arcades back in the day? Uh, Paulie Kwan, what have you got? Yeah, uh, now. Can we, is it has to be back in the day or we can't say now? <laughs> Oh, I did one now. I did yeah, one now. Back in the day, give me um, this if you want. Oh, <laughs> uh, dude, like, well, now, like, speaking of now, like, there's, like, when, when I went to the arcades a few months ago, man, there's literally, like, like, gone other days. You know, back in the 90s, we just had, you know, the light gun games and fighting games. Now, when you go to the arcades, there's, like, literally none of that now these days. It's, it's, it's really upsetting for me. Like, you know how... <laughs> Man, like back in 91, 92, you had Mortal Kombat and Street mm. Fighter arcade machines. And then in 95, you had Tekken and Virtual mm. Fighter 2. Now you go into an arcade, there's literally like no piano fighting games. Game. So I saw a piano yeah. game. What the f yeah. yeah, yeah, that piano <laughs> game. It, 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 like, I feel like the arcades now, it's all more about the driving games and the ticket mm. games and the basketball shooting game. Uh, I'm that like, man, I'm just gobsmacked by going into an arcade now and there's literally no fighting games or- Hang on, or hang on, hang on. I, I'm really disappointed that from where you are living here in Sydney that you don't have a ton of stories. You must have something. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's one of them. I, I was going to get to the uh, the old, like, because the problem is what uh, Loda just mentioned. I had the same thing happen to me years ago as well too, where some dude had to take photos for like I want. I wanted to play that arcade machine. I've never this dude, this. This, dude, this dude just gets in the way. I wanted to play Tekken Six, and the dude is in the way. Duck taking faces. photos, I'm like, oh my god, can I just play this game? <laughs> and he was he was doing a duck face, by the way, too. So they got to be Instagramers or something, eh? Like I don't think they didn't have a video camera. They just had photos, so it must have been like Insta gamers, or you yeah. know how they call themselves for Insta gamers. Yeah. yeah, and also like old stories that now that Spacey's mentioned that back then we used to have people what I saw do a lot back then was sometimes they would on purposely um they had this little I don't know what it was called it was like this thing that they walk past the arcade and it's like a click sort of thing and then straight away it gives you a credit for that game I I saw yeah, this happen I, I've seen it it's they, yeah it's an electric shock that yeah, they put up to the machine shock. and it registers yeah, yeah. As, a, as a as a credit token. yeah, yeah. Those are, that's now now that you mentioned all those. I, that's I think they have example. a yeah, but they they put alarms on the system now they to stop did. that. Yeah, that's right. They um, ended up putting alarms on it. One thing I did see was uh, speaking of air hockey uh, from before. Um, guy was watching on the side with his hands on the table, and a massive shot went and hit his hand. Blood just you could see the blood in slow motion. Mm. Just it was the most gut wrenching thing I've ever watched. So, <laughs> we, but. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and boys and girls, when you're at the arcade, don't put your hand on the um on the air ho on the air hockey machine. It's just not worth it. This guy just had blood <laughs> gushing out. It was just the most gross thing I've ever seen. Um, yeah, so th that was strange. Would that because the question was weird or strange? So that that class yeah. is as strange. <laughs> he, he, he was playing me and Lee hockey. That's what yeah. he was playing. He was playing me and Lee hockey. It's <laughs> a game that should be made. <laughs> Um, all right, I hope that answered your question there, Game Boy Bryant. We've got a few more questions. We actually got nine questions all up for this one. I do aim for ten, so nine I'm happy with. Uh, this, is, this is a friendly reminder that if you've got a question that you want to send in, you just got to send it in landscape mode, not this up and down portrait crap, not this Instagram <laughs> stories or fleet, RIP fleet. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. 
Uh, oh, okay. A minute or less, and just be creative. Don't you don't have to be standing in your bedroom asking the question. Although I don't care, like I don't mind if that's what you got to do. But try and be creative. Like you'll see one or two of these questions coming up. Uh, they went a little bit above and beyond. Anyway, next question is: Oh, you got to send it to Brian at synthspaces.com. You'll see the over that way. You'll, you'll see the little banner come up every now and again during the show. Um, yeah, no. This is like Brady Bunch, isn't it? <laughs> 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 that was pretty funny. <laughs> Next question is from Cameron Hans. Oh, <laughs> dear. This, no, actually, no. This is a serious question. He's he's done well this time around. Uh, question <laughs> that, what? <laughs> question number two. Cameron, what have you got for us? And my question is, is there a point to Xbox Live Games with Gold now that we've got cool shit like Xbox Game Pass and Xbox Free Play Days because a lot of the games that are available on Xbox Live Games with Gold these days are shit in comparison. Answer this question now. <laughs> Sorry, we're just coming back from the question, the new question, and he, this guy just comes in with a clanger for the last question. Well, you didn't let me finish the story. You, 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 you segue. I'm me. like, okay, you it's gotta fine. tell me. So, okay, okay, my bad. I don't Sorry, want to Cameron, we're it. putting your question on ice for a second. Go. So there were a group of kids like with these sleep-ins and they were known as like the bad kids in school, the ones always suspended and everything like that. They thought it would be fun to bring uh, some dog poo in with them and with a glove go around and just put it on all the joysticks of the different arcades around so that when somebody went to play it, they would just sit there sniggering because they've got dog poo on their hand. Did they have wow. gloves on? Uh, <laughs> now, now I don't know if they have gloves. I'm assuming because it was absolutely gross. But these kids were not exactly the most intelligent no, of children. No, that's 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 just wrong. And okay. just, that's safe to say they only got in there once and never again. So it was they didn't the the prank did not last very long to say the least. So I think they were out of there with an hour. So they got so their parents would have probably been pissed off the amount that they paid and they got an hour of chuckles because some kids got dog poo in their hands and then just went <laughs> in the bathroom to wash it off and then they clean the machines and away you go. So that's stupid, but yeah that's the weirdest thing. Yeah. Well, that's wow. pretty weird. <laughs> uh, okay. okay, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I, I, I just remembered one, like there was one arcade I went to, we had people put like, you know, they had their chewing gum. They on purposely stuck it on the coin. Yeah, thing, so that way used people... to see all sorts of shit. Yeah, doing we it. also in- The Western Neo Geo Sydney. machine used to allow you to plug your own headphones in. That's and cool. I used to think that was so cool. So every time I'd go in, I always bring my own headphones in and plug it in. Um, but after a while, people started finding it real fun to put crazy glue or crap in there and you couldn't... You, you, oh. So, it's, you know, this is why we can't have nice things. Anyway, getting to the new question. Um, <clears throat> uh, games with gold. So a mm. bit of context to this. Games with gold... Um, <laughs> Keeps coming out with announcements of four games, roughly, uh, for Xbox Live subscribers. And they're free games that they can have. That's it. Do you do you need to be still subscribed to access them? I don't think you do. You get... You, you do. You do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you, oh, you, you wow. got to eat a be... Um, I've got a ton of shit there. Xbox just Live get Gold locked. member <laughs> or um, Ultimate uh, Game Pass member to access those games. So, okay. yeah, that's the only way you can access them. So the question is, is there still a point to games with gold? Because the games that they're releasing now are absolute rubbish for the most part. Um, and you've got now Game Pass. Game Pass is just the buzzword. That's what oh. everyone's talking about. Yeah. And, and that's, I, I'll be honest, that's smashing Sony in some ways. Mm. Not console sales. It's not affecting them in console sales, is it? I mean, look no. at... Look at how many PlayStation Fives are, are just getting uh, out. Yeah, out there. Yeah, so yep. <laughs> they, they, they got um, a new announcement the other day saying that they're going to be able to catch up with uh, demand because they've got access to parts now. Yeah, cool story. Uh, Sony will be will believe it when we see it. <laughs> but back, I said PS5 on my shelf, but I'll believe it, eh? <laughs> but back to um, yeah, back to Xbox. Is game 
games with gold dead or is it can it still have some, i mean not everyone has game pass some people don't no. see the need to be subscribed to something like that they just want game uh xbox gold games of gold um i don't have an xbox so it's dead to me on the rivals dead on arrival to me because i don't have an xbox to use it anyway all right what, when we finish doing the rounds i, I want to get back to you on that um mm. I, but uh paulie problem for me is every month i i own all those games already <laughs> that's the one problem that, i have that comes up so often that comes it up comes so up. often yeah but um the thing is some of those games that you're getting from from that they're not on the uh ultimate game pass some of them aren't ultimate game pass but the problem is all those games like they're giving us 360 games that like are backwards compatible but none of them are the good ones like <laughs> what what sucks what sucks is i i think you know being an xbox owner um if you had a series x or a series s uh being an owner since november there's there hasn't been a new backwards compatible game in like that long run it's been nine months since we had a backwards compatible game on on the uh xbox um yeah. but the problem, has been um, crimson sky and conquer that, yeah really. yeah that was it and uh, other than that there's been nothing new for me the one problem i run into is because every month it's like yeah these are your four free games i'm like i own that already i got that physically brought that digitally then, then and plus like i said they need to add more backwards compatible games because all these games that they've done it's like all these games went backwards compatible like literally like you know the first time when they announced it on the uh, xbox one like about four or five years ago i think that's when it first happened but the problem is with games with gold they're not giving out like crazy titles like if you look at the titles that they give out to you and then you look at the playstation titles that you know sony gives you especially if you're a ps5 owner because if you're a ps5 owner you get technically three free games a month mm. xbox even though you're getting four but you're not getting good value out of it as well by the way yeah. if you don't own a playstation 5 now and that's a lot of us still believe it or not mm. mm -hmm. even <clears> though <throat> you don't own a playstation 5 still click the get those games just get them yeah because yeah. then when you get the playstation 5 you got that's this the library yep major library yeah. That's why I used to do as a kid. When I knew I was getting a console for Christmas, I actually bought the games like through the year. So when I got the console at Christmas, I had that would like, do six my or head games. in. Oh my god, that would do my head in. <laughs> staring know, at the I box. Used, oh wow! One day I'll get to play it. <laughs> I used to look at the instruction booklets, and I hate instruction booklets. But I just like flicking through it because we had no YouTube back then, obviously. So we had really nothing apart from game magazines to go with, unless you had a friend who had the game. But I used to just like flicking through all the, um, the instruction booklets, look at the box, and save it up for the next game for when it come out. But the day that I did actually get the console, it was the best day ever because you had all that these games that you've been waiting all year for. Two happy, <sighs> two happy gamers, what's your uh, take on this? Uh, I think, like, yes, Xbox uh, Live with Gold is going the way of the Dodo. It had its heyday back before Game Pass was a thing. I think the reason why we are getting such crap games is actually like a marketing decision from uh, from Xbox to say, yes, we have games with gold, but we want those people to move to our new platform. They're just Game kill Pass. I don't want to be. F I'm sorry. I'm going no. to have to they say. tried to do that. They tried to do that a few months ago. I don't want to be, be dicked around by marketing. Just get rid of it if you're going to. I hate being manipulated. I really can't stand it, it, when marketing just gets too much control and saying what happens like they, they did try to do that but there was actually like outcry in the community so yeah. they decided to like have some sense of parity between xbox gold and what xbox game pass is as far as pricing was going so that those people who were on live would move to game pass and then they would shut it down but as soon as they did that as soon as they made that announcement there was huge backlash from the community mm. and so they recanted on that they kept the pricing model as the same, and now it's that lasted basically... 24 hours. That decision, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's going like to have longer legs, but it probably shouldn't have. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, uh, for the most part, I find that uh, Xbox have been doing very well since they're backpedaling from they have. the yeah. Xbox One launch. Uh, yeah. I, I can't. Uh, I mean, we can't keep going back to the Xbox One launch. That's done. That's history. Um, but so many YouTubers just keep bringing it back, like, <laughs> the, like the VCR, no, the VCR, uh, the VCR. Oh, the really? VCR. That's that's history, man. And that's just almost <laughs> ten years ago now. Uh, by the way, my Xbox One day one from 2013 still going strong. Thank you very much. Um, it still works, no problem at all. 
So I, I actually mm. didn't mind the, the whole... I, I didn't like the launch details. Whoa. Oh, we lost him. His camera. Barry. He's no, Barry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. no, something else now. It's something <laughs> else. <laughs> We're just going to continue on. Forget about it. <laughs> so I, I was going to. I, I, I didn't like the whole. Uh, what was his name? Don Matrix. Don, Ma Don, Don, Ma Don Matrix, yeah. Yeah. What uh, is, that what is oh, going look, on? That new camera. <laughs> Uh, I'll tell, you, I tell you what he's done. He's dug out his old Xbox 360 cam. Camera. <laughs> I'm on the yeah, I'm on he's connect, got his live vision camera. I'm on Connect. How, there you go. Is he no, on Connect? Fine. No. Really? Yeah, this is, this is Connect, yeah. yeah. I'm on the Xbox Connect. <laughs> is, is that the 360 Connect or the Xbox One Connect, by the way? I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. It's just like that other camera's going to die now, so I brought out the backup. <laughs> oh, and okay. He, and you wanted to show off these Dreamcast over there as well. That's what you wanted to do. <laughs> we can see more of your room now. We can actually see more of your room now. So yeah, it's a fucking mess. It's, it's a great. problem. It's, it's awesome. I, I love it. I love it. Um. So, did we answer this question? Is there still a point to Xbox games with gold? I think I personally I do look at them games, but I'm a little bit fussy with what games I want to actually commit to and buy. So, yeah. uh, I. I, I'm a hesitant yes at the moment. I don't want to see him. I don't want to see him drop it. Uh, that, yeah, that's said, just me. The problem is the titles for me. They're they're pretty lackluster the last few months. This year, a lot of the titles I think they're pretty lackluster. Yeah. They haven't been anything spectacular, like nothing spectacular at all. Like there's there hasn't been a major AAA title because the problem is they want you to jump onto Game Pass to play it. That that's the thing they're doing as well too. Just just. <laughs> Is one giving away one good game going to stop someone from going to Game Pass? Come on. No. We'll see. As I said, there's there's a lot they could do better with. I'm just trying to see what the new games are for game uh, games with gold. Rock, rock, uh, rock of Ages Planet 3. 3. Yep. Um, rock of Ages is still there. Rock of Ages is yeah, still there. Yeah, and then there, there's only three this month. So. Um, I know well, the there's a problem, Xbox. Mm -hmm. You're giving away only... Oh, sorry. Breaking news: three hundred and nineteen New South Wales cases. <laughs> Jesus. Yes, we're getting to seven hundred soon. That just came in. Thank you. Well, that, that, was Bing, that, longer, that was Bing news. <laughs> That's a Bing actually did something productive for for once. <laughs> three nineteen. Um, that's for August. I'm just. No, nah, I'm. I, I won't worry about that. You, you, you see the titles? That they're, they're nothing spectacular. <laughs> Mm. Ukulele, Dark Side is free, Lost Planet. I should free. Yeah, they're, they're not and bad. Right. They're not bad games. Ukulele, it's been better which one than it has been. Which ukulele is it? The first one or the second one? The first one. The first one. The first one. The, first one. the second one. Then Possible Lair was a lot better. I thought. I like the. I. I. I didn't like the second one. Really? I like that one. Uh, the first one was too much of a collective fun. I felt like I was just like collecting what's crap wrong? for like hours. What's wrong with that? I've, some people it's like that. It's, like, it's so boring. Like, you know, Mario 64, you get that star, we're going to get like, 100 coins um, for the last star. I always hated doing that because it, it forced you to look around everywhere. It's like, I don't want to do and that. Yet I just wanna... So many people go on about how, oh, getting that last, what is it, uh, in <laughs> Mario 64, getting that last. <laughs> That last uh, star in Mario 64, wow, be such a big deal. You don't like that? No, I don't like that at all. I, thought, I like the rest of it. I just didn't like doing that last star. So if you go through my files, I usually always use that. Uh, I always leave it and just skip on to the next painting and come back to it later. And then at the end of the game, I've got all these last stars to collect. So it's like, ah, uh, I'm going to go through this massive collector fun um, at the end of the game. I don't know, it's kind of boring. I don't know. I just don't like doing it. Anyway, back to the question. Um, like Xbox games with gold. Is it something that you want to see, see keep going? It doesn't affect me at all. So they can do what the hell they want to do. <laughs> and, and yeah, that brings it back to what I was going to ask you. Why aren't you on board with Xbox? What's your well, it's beef? Not, it's, it's, it's no beef. <laughs> What's it's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> It's literally a space then because I've got like only a certain amount to, um, I can put there, so I'm really gonna be selective at this point in time. I'm gonna be selective of what I buy because I'm running out of room. I'm literally running out of room. I've got nowhere to put this stuff anymore, so I don't want to get rid of anything either. So every time I get a new uh, console, if it takes up room, I'm 
where I put my stuff out in the lounge room, and then when I replace it with something new, I'm gonna put it in storage somewhere, right? So the storage is getting filled <laughs> up, and then my TV room is getting filled up. So it's more of a like, okay, I'm gonna, I can't get all three brands at the moment, so I have to stick with just the two. So I got Nintendo and Sony, and I just have to leave Xbox out for for the moment. I'll go back to it when I got more room to get it, but I just don't have the room to put it anywhere. That's right. it's got nothing to do with Xbox itself. All I right. Like Xbox. All right. Wow. You can ask the question. I give you the you answer. Didn't it four or five times in the same way. <laughs> All yeah, right. but look, look at the Happy Gamer's room. He, he's got a lot of space still there. You can yeah, see. I'm sure yeah, you can yeah, put, put an arcade machine. Yeah, just, yeah, you can fit an arcade machine in there. I'm sure Zelda. there's a pinball yeah. machine you could fit in there. <laughs> that's not space. That's the problem I'm using. Someone's going back in there. All right, so we're going to get on to the next one. Cameron, thank you very much for doing a good question this time around. That was a good question. Was it a was a good question. question. <laughs> a good question. Next question is from a new person, Ben Magnet. Question hey, number Benny. three. Ben, what have you got for us? Better be good. United States, how's it going, man? I almost forgot to record this. I'm about to um, go to bed. It's pretty late here in the United States. I'm about to go on a trip, going to, to the East Coast to visit some family. But anyways, my question for you, good sir, is is there any special edition of a video game that came out in other territories say here in the united states or in japan but did not come out in the pal regions because let me tell you i was very very bummed that the legends of the Link's awakening hark or steel book case only came out in japan and the pal regions and not the united states really bummed about that still mad kind of not kind of very very bad anyways Hope you have a good one. Glad to hear your show's back. I gotta watch it, and I will watch it. So have a good one, man. Bye. So it's cool. We're trying to build an extra room. So top that's loader, our next top loader, loader, shut up. You're on a tangent. We're going. Okay, so the question is: Were there any limited editions that came out overseas that didn't make it to powder bungee out? Before we do answer that question, though, can we take a moment to address two happy gamers? I'm going to make your camera large. Uh, what is going on there? What, that room is massive. Yeah, it's you got, a great room. I love and, it. And there's a, there's a family moment going on in the background. <laughs> yeah, the, the peach is falling asleep on Beck as she's reading a book and she's just realized she's on cam. Uh, Memories. Give us a wave, Beck. Give us a wave. Yay, babe. Yay! <laughs> yeah, so, I converted my garage into a games room, so it's six by six meters, so I do have oh, a lot of space. That's right. what I'm doing next. That's exactly what I'm doing next. Exactly what you just said. Uh, How do you uh, put your car outside? Is that all right? Putting your car outside? Because that's what I'm going to do if I make a game room. I used to just ram the car in through the machines. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's my games room. I forgot about that. <laughs> you need a miniature ray. Just a miniaturizing ray. That's what we got. Okay. Make them in the matchbox size. Who cares about the cars? It's all about the games. It's like Fantastic Voyage, you know? Maybe you shrink yourself down a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... Yeah, uh, limited editions that didn't make it to power. I'll start. Oh, uh, come on. Why start? What's the go? Xenoblade Chronicles. <laughs> uh, it, the UK one, they Ooh. got a, a vinyl um, soundtrack. We didn't get that. We got CD. That's the only yeah. thing. I don't care about the other limited editions. I'm happy. I'm not really? overly big on limited editions. They take up too much room. Although I... Sometimes it's more than just that, though. Like, for my answer, I'll give you an example. Do you remember the game Mortal Kombat Deception back in 2000, whatever it was? 2004. So the, American, the American version had a collector's edition, and it, it, came, with, it came with a documentary and the arcade perfect of Mortal Kombat 1. They don't get... And then they came back to Australia, and you're thinking now, oh, you can get Mortal Kombat Perfect um, anywhere, you can get a um, copy of that game, but back then it was a lot harder to do. So it was actually a pretty good deal to do that back then, because it was hard to get an arcade perfect of Mortal Kombat 1 back then. And we didn't get it! I was like, why the heck did you not send it out here? It was so unfair, I was so mad. Because I've been waiting for so long to play an arcade version of Mortal Kombat from the arcades, because we got the Super Nintendo version that was botched, the Mega Drive version was botched, pretty much every version of Mortal Kombat up to that point was botched. There's no way of getting an arcade perfect Mortal Kombat the back mega, then. The Mega was CD the was the closest uh, you could get to it. Uh, oh, no. Oh, that was the soundtrack. It had the actual soundtrack from yeah. the arcade. 
The colors are bad though, dude. The colors are Yeah, they were bad. The yeah. colors are horrible. Okay, we've got the sound and you got loading times as well. So get put that into Toby, mix. shut up. Let him get a word in. <laughs> I was gonna say they're only bad if you're playing it through A V. If you actually like played your Mega C D through Star, the the color pile but... is a lot more palatable and a lot more closer to the arcade. <laughs> But got they got less colours on the Mega Drive there, because if you look at it, the, the blue skies are like horrible. It's it's not it's 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 not right, man. Well honestly, do a comparison to it, it's it's way off. The Mega Drive itself, because the Mega CD is an is an add-on, it's using the hardware still of the Mega Drive, which the color the colours there's a lot less colours compared to say the Super Nintendo or whatever. Oh, I took out my earphone there. <laughs> I couldn't hear <laughs> myself. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that one, but I'll, I'll just leave it. But I don't know. Goffy Try through Scar. Try through Scar. Gofioso <laughs> just chimed in and said epic room, by the way. Yeah, that's a fucking epic room, indeed. It is. <laughs> yeah, it's an epic room. I'll do a screenshot and see. We'll see. Then we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But I don't know. I don't know. All right, but that wasn't the question. You've gone off on what's called a tangent. Can we get back to uh, limited editions that bummed you out that didn't get it to here? So what else? Anything else? Besides fucking Mortal Kombat. <laughs> oh, oh. Then my, my, my question, then my answer's out the window because that's Mortal Kombat related to you get two guys who love Mortal Kombat on the same podcast at the same time. <laughs> Was so, there a limited so what... edition Sea of Thieves game that didn't make it here? <laughs> Mine, mine's a consoles. Like, I don't know if you can see, but all the Legend of Zelda stuff in the back corner there. It shits me to tears when we don't get some of the limited edition consoles. Not yeah. so much the games, mm. but the mm. Hyrule Shield edition uh, Zelda, Zelda console. And then there was a green one, 2DS, that was only released in... Uh, North America as well, and wow. then the Wii U. The only version where they made any difference to the console was the limited edition Wind Waker HD collection. And that was shit. That was just a, yeah, but that was yeah. shit. They just put a bit of gold paint on it. Who gives a fuck? Yeah, but yeah, Australia, we only got it in black. Like it was just the normal Wii U with yeah, the game. The, with the, the Wii U, they yeah. had uh, two colors available: white or black. Uh, yeah. And the white one was like the poor edition. Oh um, yeah, the eight yeah, gigabyte, yeah, eight gigabyte and, storage. Yeah, eight gigabyte. <laughs> in, in even when that came out, that was that was crap. That was really mm. limited. Like basically, yeah. if you bought a Wii U, you had to buy additional storage. It was pretty much. I mean, Nintendo are not good for their internal storage. You're pretty much always getting the external card, aren't you? Even with the Switch, Switch you're getting the external same. cards. Although, it just... I'm happy that they did make the decision to go to SD card internal yeah. memory. That was a good move. But uh, so they, should, they should be putting bigger internal storage into it. It's just it's ridiculous. It fills up so fast. It was like the you Vita. Can't... The Vita came out with no storage, oh, basically no. Oh, internal. Same with PSP. And the system, they wanted you to download and buy games off their, um, off their digital store, but they were not going to give you any way of doing it. Uh, Sony just really stuffed that console up. Who was it that posted a picture of the Vita with a SD card adapter? Uh, but Wasn't a memory me. card. Wasn't Someone me. did that just on Twitter just <laughs> recently. Anyway, um, I yeah, the only thing that I wanted was that Xenoblade Chronicles final. Um, I don't really that. go chasing. If I mean, I have bought a couple of limited edition games. I'm going to start moving into that direction no more because I looked when I moved. All my games are around in that cupboard back there, and they take up so much room. And I'm just starting to think now, I don't have the time to play it. The games are getting bigger. I don't have the time to play them all. So I've got to be more careful what games I do buy. And I've got to make the games an experience. So mm. getting the limited edition makes you feel like you're buying into an experience rather than just buying a game. So I think I'll do a lot of editions without even using them for the most part. I think, you know, if you've already got the actual basic console, I think a lot of those uh extra systems the special editions a lot of people would like to collect them as well like you just said you know you put it on the shelf looks nice or whatever so or as your wife pointed out you buy them and just keep them sealed on a on the shelf i've seen you do the same with your master system phaser and your what i got the one item and he's 
How what? are you using that one what? item? <laughs> what do you amoebas? Your amoebas have a purpose. Your amoebas have a purpose, but everyone keeps them in the box. What they're pop vinyls. Yeah, everyone keeps them. Yeah, he's holding on to that. He won't let go. <laughs> what? Pop vinyls. Pop vinyls are a great example because they're actually a toy. But people keep it in a box for display. You see whole walls of them for display. You go into the um, zine shelves, they've got whole walls of them in display. That's how they like yeah, to keep them. Pop vinyls, man, they're just annoying. I bet you... Um, I don't do pop vinyls. Holy can't stand them i bet they take up like so much room in the shelves at the work i i stop uh, all right on the question of pop vinyls i stopped collecting them uh once rick and morty kept releasing so many and no. then the whole chase thing once yeah. the whole chase pop vinyls things came in i was done i was like yeah no i'm done i'm not doing pop vinyls no more Oh, yes. We're only up to question number three. We've got to move on. Uh, uh, I didn't get to answer it. Yeah. Okay, hurry up. Come on, let's get going. Okay. So, so, two questions like, oh, shut up now. We're going to move on. I'll ask you the question, but we're going to move on now. Yeah, so as Top Loader mentioned, that Mortal Kombat Deception Steelbook was one of them. And also, this is real quick, because, uh, you know, the game was banned in Australia, of course. There was a special edition Mortal Kombat with the arcade stick, because it was banned in Australia. We were going to get it. Then it got, the, got, it got banned. And the um, other one, I think Goffy also is going to like this. Even though the game was terrible, Resident Evil 6 had like a really crazy edition in Japan. Yeah. There was a, yes, it was about $2,000 Australian. And it come it came with Leon's leather jacket. Yeah. That, oh, oh, wow. Yeah, it came <laughs> with Leon's leather jacket from Resident Evil 6, even though Resi 6 was crap. Yeah. But yeah, that if, was another if one. Shenmue, that we... If Shenmue came out with a limited edition... Rio. Jacket, jacket. Rio, I'd, jacket. I'd be, you, you'll yeah. be on it. Yeah, be yeah. On so, that. yeah. So that, that that's my quick answer for that. <laughs> can, can I ask something about Shenmue? Is that like an interesting? I've never played it. It doesn't look interesting to me. It I don't doesn't... know. What it is. <laughs> <laughs> How fucking rude can you be? Like, seriously, that's just... Oh, well, yeah, that game that you really like, it looks yeah. shit. <laughs> what's so fun about it? I don't, I don't know. Like, I've seen, like, playthroughs and stuff. I'm thinking, what's so fun about it? I don't know. Fun's not Mate, the it word. Mate, it was the it word. Was. It's, it's a, the, when it came out, it was a product of its time. Um, it, it doesn't hold up well, I will admit, in 2021, because in 2000 or 1998, I should add, when that game came out, mm. there was mm. nothing else like it. It was mm. way different. And for me, it had a more of an impact on me than I guess most people, because after I played it for the first time and finished it, I then went to Japan for the first mm. time after having played it. And, and it was like, holy shit, they've got this down so damn well. Even the light switches and, and the streets and the power lines and everything that you see around you were from the game. So it, it's hard to explain. I, I like the fact that it, it's whole, it's a innocent, wholesome game. And in 2021, most people don't give a shit about those <laughs> those type of things they because you look at grand theft auto we're like okay thank you for that id we're gonna we're now gonna go and put hookers and guns and and all the other <laughs> things and, and it sold way better um, well that's which, interesting yeah <laughs> but i i do but I, I do like the innocence of shenmue yeah don't yeah, forget, I, I, Shenmue 2 was one of the most expensive games ever mm. made back in the day in 2000. Well, Shenmue 1 and 2 were done yeah, as yeah, combined. Were, yeah. yeah they're in the, the Guinness most book of records game. They're in the Guinness Book of Records at the time for the most expensive game ever made. Um, and they there's, did, a one, there's a third one out yet? Third one's been released. It's out. It's, yeah, it's been out for like two, three years now. Yeah, yeah. but it's, it's a little bit more missed it, than here. It was uh, funded by the fans as well, too. The, yeah. prob the problem yeah. with the third one is that it tries to stick too close to the original rather than trying to innovate. That's that's my my uh, review of Shenmue 3 in one sentence. <laughs> Also, Top Loader, you know Shenmue 1 and 2 is on the Game Pass, so you can get Xbox and play that off the Game Pass, by the way. <laughs> is it on Game Pass? I didn't realize that. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. a physical type of guy now. I like to do physical. I like to go so, there. You had a chance to get it at EB for 15 bucks at one point. One and two. I, I, had... <laughs> I looked at it. I did see it. I'm like, uh, I don't know. Maybe. Like, it just never, never ended up getting The good it. thing about the, the re-release is that they tidied up the controls. The controls were a little bit clunky, tractor-like back in the day. Um, it, it's a lot easier to get into now. 
it's still i can see a lot of gamers like if you you need patience to play it that's the problem mm. and a lot of people just can't be fucked no, the, the <laughs> gamers now a lot of gamers now these days they don't have the patience for for anything like that now yeah. uh, which is yeah. a shame because genmi one and two was like i thought it was a game ahead of its time for that console in mm. 99 and 2000 it was really ahead of its time I'm, mm. I'm playing it now like what 20 years later or just or thereabouts and i'm still finding new things in the game that i didn't come across when i first played it yeah because true. it was because it was the first game to have a a, a day night cycle and but, each npc has their little routine that they do in the game and you can track my, those npcs throughout the game my dreamcast um clock doesn't work anymore every time i load it up it changes i'm going to change the time so is that yeah, gonna, you, need to get, something... you need to you need to uh, you need to change the battery in it, which unfortunately the Dreamcast is a shit to change because it's hard. Yes, it is. It is. That's a morning. Uh, I, I, I do it all the time. <laughs> I, I don't think it's difficult, but I'm good with it. It is difficult. Stuff. You gotta. It's not, okay. Yeah, the battery. <laughs> battery. Yeah. Battery in the satin. You just take it out, put a new battery yeah. in. Done. Yeah. But Dreamcast, you gotta solder the bastard. It's. <laughs> yeah. Shoulder on, mate. It's yeah. the same with new batteries in Game Boy games, though. Soldering's not a hard task. That's what YouTube's for. <laughs> Next thing, you you got your most expensive Game Boy game, you're doing it's soldering. Oh, shit! I no, did. Right. I've seen some horror stories. Uh, are we done with question number three out of nine? I might remind you. Yes. I don't even remember what the question was. Oh, the limited edition. You, you mentioned the oh, yeah, 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 okay, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say we're done. Uh, yeah. Ben Magnet, thank you very much for that question. Uh, I might revert that back to you in the comments if you're watching this later on YouTube. Was there any PAL version games that came out that you wanted in your part of the world? Uh, mm. We hear it all the time. Uh, he mm. said that the Steel um, Limited Tally? Edition Zelda, Zelda. Uh, yeah. uh, Skyward Swords came out. And, mate, don't get too carried away about metal limited mm. edition because they rust it's just i've got mm. so many games in my collection that were steel case and now you can't yeah you can't you, look at it you're, without you're, going you're, you're, you're gonna laugh at what i do usually when um when i get still book ones i just open the top part of the seal and then put it back in and then like luckily for where i work i could just go reseal it again <laughs> 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 Oh, which right, is good. Is, so cool. The next so question cool. is from 8 Bit Dad, 7DC. 8 Bit Dad, if you can please tell us what 7. You've told me in the past, I've forgotten. What, what does the 7DC refer to? I would love to know. Um, Maybe it was born in that era. 7DC. <laughs> no, that doesn't make sense. DC. <laughs> Uh, that's bc you're thinking of oh wow DC. dc yeah it was born in dc comics oh okay all right um 8-bit dad or seth what have you got for us 8-bit dad 7 dc here better known as seth my question for the panel is what makes a good video game reboot to me a lot of it depends on how the technology has changed and how the game uses that technology to update and improve its gameplay. My pick for one of the best examples of a reboot is Qbert for the PlayStation 1. Can't wait to see what you guys have to say. Oh, okay, I, I thought he went. I thought he was a waffler, but he's not. It, it, it was a very quick one. That one. Um, what makes a oh, good game I reboot? I, 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 well, you guys go first. I've gone first every other time. Uh, I'm trying to well, figure the answer. <laughs> well, well, obviously it makes a great reboot is keeping some of the a lot of the old elements and redoing them in a way that you can do it in a new way. Like my example would be Metroid Prime. So Metroid Prime took a lot of the same elements, like the yeah, metal and all that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's flexing. He's flexing. I bring my own props. See, that's why the space is up there right now. But Metroid Prime honestly did it so well. It took so much of what was great about Super Metroid and the games before that and just made them 3D in a way that really fit, especially with the Morph Ball, because obviously in Super Metroid, you can get to secret areas by going on a 2D plane. But with the Morph Ball, you could really like lock into things. You can like um, bounce up and to go into the 3D environments a lot better. 
And it's probably, honestly, the best reboot, apart from Sands of Time as well, was a great one. But I've already said that in another video because we've had a similar question before. But yeah. Metroid, Metroid Prime is definitely up there with the best reboots. And I'm really looking forward to the new one we're making, which is taking forever because I keep redoing the game. So I don't know what we're going to do in there, but I hope they bring it out because I really love the Metroid Prime trilogy as well. I'll, I'll, I've got a uh, confession. I think I've recycled that question. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was exa- I was like, I swear I've read this before because I think it was the same one okay. that I was on last no, time. What, what it is is he sent me uh, 10 questions and they're in a zip file and I didn't put it, move it over as, as used in the used folder. So that's okay. We can come up with a, maybe a different answer this time around. I, I have a different answer just because of that. I knew it was the same one. Yeah. All right. So what's your what's your answer? God of War, hundred percent, hands down. Yep. Like that game and what they did with it and how they basically created something new and vibrant and it not having any cutscenes and just the emotional story that it tells versus this like thug who goes around banging gods and <laughs> cutting off heads and everything like that. It's a lot more of a wholesome, uh, wholesome experience. And I just love what they did with the God of War, the relationship between father and son, and, son yeah. and just the direction of that game's going. Like that's by far my favorite reboot of all time. Ooh. Boy. The, yeah, yeah I, haven't, boy. I haven't played it. I still haven't played it. I've been neglecting my PlayStation 4 Pro. Uh, I do need to get it into this room and start. And I will, because I'm going to be that TV. It's mm. going to go. And I'm going to have consoles up there because this new monitor that I've got uh, just mm. makes it a lot easier now to uh, put games in and out on, on this and stream them at the same time. Just to point out, that's not a monitor. It's a Starship windscreen. <laughs> <laughs> For those who can't see it, I've been doing my best to try and not mention it until now. It's a yeah, super, it su- super ultra wide monitor. It's equivalent of two 27 inch uh, monitors. He, he's side just by flexing side. them. He's just uh, flexing it. Is, it. it is awesome. He's flexing. He's I, like, man, I, I shit. I'm gonna flex. He, he's like, look, look, guys, look at me play for the Horizon <laughs> Four on a new wide monitor. Did you ever see that on your TV? Did you ever see that on a four by three? No, no, or six <laughs> four by three. Four yeah, by no, three. I'm just 32, I'm just... It's thirty-two by nine. Thank you very much. <laughs> there you go. I've gone back old school. That's why. Um. um it's long. It's Paul- long and wide. Look at wide. Holy quick. Thank save you. us. Go, okay? uh, um, now, now that we're speaking of reboot, I, I don't know if you put in a remake or a reboot category. Resident Evil 2. Like when Resident Evil 2 got that HD That's a good remake. Reboot. It's a- yeah, it's a good reboot. Because um, the original, if you played, you didn't have the over the shoulder cam because number two, they had a new over the shoulder cam, made it much more easier to play as well, too. And it put a lot more fear into you, especially when you see Mr. X coming at you. Mm. And all I can think of DMX, um, you know, <laughs> it's going to give a tear straight away every time R. I hear it. RIP DMX. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. RIP DMX. Yeah, I thought the Resident Evil, like, with their with the way it's going, especially with the RE engine, they're, mm. they're doing really well. Unfortunately, number three, that was like Resident Evil 3 number yeah. six was my favorite game of all time. But really? unfortunately, yeah. Um, it sucked. It well, sucked. It, sucked. It, was, it, it was. It was okay. okay. Yeah, it was. Mm. It was passable, but it should have been done as a downloadable content instead of a full retail game. That, that's that's my yeah. honest thing. I thought RE2. They they brought back like by doing what they did. Now now it makes me give um think about if they do Resident Evil Four, is are they going to do the exact same thing or are they going to mm. change it up again as well too? So. Oh, by the way, just, just getting back to the chat here, uh, oh. Emerald Rangers is in the, the chat. Thank you very much for joining. Super Jude, good to see you. Uh, also, Gofioso is lurking. Yakaboo and Key Mouse mm-hmm. and Game Boy Bryant. And probably. And Maddie. And Maddie. Yeah, Maddie. Yeah, Maddie, no. Maddie. Um, Maddie. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> G'day, all. Thank you for Wait. joining in. Um, oh. em- Emerald's just Welcome wrote, RE4 doesn't need Emerald changing. Ranges. No, he's right. Actually, I've got a copy right next to you when you play. <laughs> no, he goes, he's flexing again. <laughs> it's actually my favorite Resident Evil game, so I hope I don't change it too much because I actually really like it how it is. People complain about having a strafe in it, but I actually didn't mind not having a strafe. It didn't really affect me that much, but I don't know. It's pretty perfect, that game. A lot of diehard Resident Evil fans don't see it as survival horror as much more of an action game, but I actually like the action part of it more, so just my opinion. 
but getting back, what makes a good <laughs> game reboot? A good what I I don't know. Um, didn't they do a new one of um, Crash? Didn't they re? Yeah, yeah, Crash re yeah that's a remaster. Yeah, that's a remaster. A remaster. They made it more harder though than the original, so. So it really it's hard. when you get a, a franchise oh, and shove it in, uh, basically reinvent it to a degree, which is such yeah. So it's same for restarting. Actually, it, you know what? I just continuation. I just remember, you know what got a good reboot? The the Tomb Raider series. Yeah. The, the, the latest yeah. Tomb Raider series got good reboots because they 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 got away from her, you know, as a pinup female character, and then they made her like they gave more character in in the new you know the newer Tomb Raider games. It made it more vulnerable. More vulnerable as well, and too. So I'm just laughing at this name and the person in the chat. Evil Uncle Kaka. Thank you for joining. I love that name. <laughs> Kaka. <laughs> Kaka. It's Kaka. Oh, uh, Isn't that shit? Kaka. Like. Yes, like, it is. Yes, it is. Okay, okay. I thought it was the football player. <laughs> <laughs> Probably is as well, to be yeah. fair. Um, I don't know, but uh, I've been. I'm trying to think of good remakes, but there hasn't been that many. I think we're going to see more. What's that Beyond Good and Evil? That, I think yeah, but, that's yeah, looking true, like it's going to be a good true. reboot, but I'm I'm also worried that that's going to be the new Duke Nukem. Mm. The joke that's the that's industry is taking so yeah, long. Like, it's in develop. It's I think it's looking like a development hell, but they're trying to reassure us that it's not going to. It, actually, no, Duke Nukem's probably an unfair comparison. More of a mm. cyber cyberpunk. <laughs> oh, look, so I would play well, cyberpunk over really Duke Nukem forever any day. <laughs> well, Cyberpunk's not that bad. If you give it a yeah, chance, it's actually not that bad. Like it just came out at a time where you know, like it was rushed. But once the the patches are coming out now, they're fix it's getting better and better now. It's actually more playable now. <laughs> uh, Scorched Earth remake, as uh, Drew just mentioned. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Capcom classic right there. Okay, okay. Reboot. <laughs> like you, let, let's break this down a bit. Um, Mario going into 3D. Is that a reboot? Mm. That was the ultimate yeah, reboot. That, that kind, that kind of is. Yeah. yeah that oh, was a reboot. That. That's sort of a reboot. Don't shrug your shoulders. That was the ultimate reboot. It was a 2D, <laughs> and it went 3D. They rebooted the series in a big way, and mm. and Sonic with uh, Sonic Adventures. That divide. Sonic Adventures. Yeah, uh, that, yeah. that divided you know. the uh, the, yeah, yeah. the fan base a little. Yeah, I um, thought it was great. Sonic Adventures, <laughs> amazing. It's a great <laughs> game. But... It's funny. Yeah, people it's people love it. Some people hate it. Good so, one. yeah, could could I do a bit tidy up though. I still prefer 2D Mario, but I do like Mario, like the new ones, like 3D. But I still prefer, obviously, the classic 2D. So. But they did it well. Uh, Nintendo always do their reboots or whatever well, like with their characters. Even like you can classify Breath of the Wild as a reboot because that's a completely different yeah, setup to yeah. the previous ones as well. Yeah. So we got yeah, Dark Souls Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. Dark Souls Zelda. Yeah, yeah, true. Thank you very much, 8-Bit Dad. We're going to move on now to question number five from Steve Williamson. Oh. So for those who don't know who Steve Williamson is. Uh, you might more know him as from games in Telford, but he's left games, the game store in Telford. Oh, he has no, some absolute mm. cracker uh, videos on that page. I'm sure we're going to see some more absolute cracker material from him in the future. Did you see the one where he dressed up as Freddie Mercury? Yes, yes. <laughs> I loved all his videos. And, and you were telling me, hey, why don't you do that at your workplace? If you do that at your workplace, you'll get a lot of game sales. I'm like, nah, that, that's a thing. Yeah, Steve, you that's Paul Quan. Well. Paul yeah. Quan can dress up in a blue tight Lycra outfit and go running around uh, Cabramatta. Oh, God. <laughs> 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 and, and collecting gold rings why not oh god <laughs> anyway steve, <laughs> steve what have you got for us mate <laughs> to see the show back and is that toppy i see over there i see you oh how you doing so i've been playing a lot of the falcon here recently with its piracy goodness and i was wondering what's the best game with pirates in yeah <laughs> That's gonna be my answer. 
He's got so his we... control and he's shit. Oh, he's a pirate! He's a pirate! <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Um, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so are you just so he just saw the question. So just just a bit of a um, tearing down the wall a little bit. The guests don't get to see the questions. I have to read it out to them. One day I'll work out a way of so that they can see it. But um, he he didn't he didn't know that we we're going to have this question, and he's turned up with the Sea of Thieves shirt. So what's Rip your up. answer? So Sea of Thieves is your answer. 100%. I love that game. Yeah, I'm it is, gonna... It's like relaxing in a way that you just, you don't expect it. And especially during COVID, being able to play that with some of my friends to a, a place where like we feel that we can do something relaxing, but we can engage in combat or we can do something more serious. It's just what it was at the start and what it is now, it's completely different. And especially well, what are you with doing it? What are you one, doing it? You just do what? What's the goal? The that's goal to is do. to be a pirate and live the pirate life. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's quests you can do. There's like base. There's a lot of like mission-based things in there now that there wasn't before that you do unlock unlockables from completing these missions. Like a pirate's life, which is obviously um, aligned with Disney Pirates of the Caribbean. You play through aspects of the franchise from Pirates of the Caribbean uh, with Jack Sparrow. You go against um, Davy Jones, and there's fun mission-based things, new weapons, and then you can unlock like um, cosmetics from completing it. And that's another great thing about like Sea of Thieves as well. You can play a game um, and not play it for a year and come back and get destroyed. <laughs> With Sea of Thieves, there's no weapons buff. Everyone, doesn't matter whether you're a new or old player, you can all jump in, whether it's been a year or a day, and you're both on the same kind of level as far as guns and abilities go. It's it's great. I rec highly recommend everybody play it on Xbox Game Pass. Yeah, get a, get a, get a bloody Xbox top loo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when I get a when I get a name, the first thing I get, and I'll tweet it to you. <laughs> um, Holly? Yeah, all right. So there was three out there to choose from. There was uh, Monkey Island was one of them. I was going to mm. say, man. Oh, um, yeah. That's a good one. Uh, Sydney's Pirates. And then yeah. this gentleman here, he just mentioned Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves probably changed pirate games a lot for me. There, there has never been a pirate game that I really enjoyed until I played Sea of, uh, sea of Thieves. And I know Emerald's going to love this. I'm going to hashtag pirate party in here. Uh, um, and look, <laughs> like, I, I'm going to tell you my, my fun experience with it. Like two weeks ago, I had a really, really fun experience with it because um, I managed to get into alliance with uh, four other uh, ships. So we had like 16 members in the game. <laughs> And then and the cool thing is about Sea of Thieves, there's a lot of things that you get to explore as well too. As I said, I, I got to play it with like, you know, 15 other people. It was it was an amazing experience because there was a lot of things I didn't realize that you could do in a game. It wasn't just about, you know, uh, go go on a ship with your friends and then go find this treasure and stuff like that. And it turns out there was more secrets to it. Like there was more secret rooms. And also there was yeah. a lot of secrets where like, you know, if you play like, say if you have like, seven other people or whatever you can play a song together and it unlocks more stuff and such and such and there's a lot of fun quests and i mean who, who doesn't love getting drunk with their mates and, and you know playing as a pirate and then and punching on with someone face. yeah and they're getting in their face and stuff like that as i said sea of thieves like it changed uh, a lot for me when playing pirate games not pirated mm. games but pirate games <laughs> <laughs> there's a big difference there <laughs> Hmm. Well, uh, Emerald Ray just says I love trolling in Sea of Thieves. Uh, of course he does. <laughs> when I got this question, I'm like, pirate games? I don't know if I've played that many pirate games apart from Secret of Monkey Island, which was there like was years and years ago. But I was thinking about, well, there's lots of pirate theme games. So like Wind Waker, that's a pirate theme game. But what I really thought about, but you know what? Donkey Kong Country, Diddy's Ooh. Conquest, is oh, a it's, it's, oh, it's, it's oh, oh, great, mate. Oh, I love look that at game. the flexing going on. I could grab my do it too, all right. I could grab my copy of Sea of Thieves, but it's really stuck behind me. The digital demo is probably why it's, you can't uh, show on screen. But everyone wants to see a prop. Everyone wants to see what you're talking about. I think it brings a little bit of a good element to explain yourself. Okay, okay, I get it. You don't have to apologize. <laughs> yes, what a question. I get my chance to answer. You're like, oh, no, no, just keep it quiet for a little bit. You want me to talk and ask my question? Answer it for a while, 
No, you weren't not answering the question. You were going on. Oh my god. I was. I interrupted. I was you interrupted. interrupted yourself. That's my fault. I'll take, I'll take he, that. He, he, wanted, he wanted to flex the. Uh, the that's, that's what I interrupted for. <laughs> and then I said I wasn't flexing. I was just showing you that. Well, I'm talking oh, about. You just happened complex. to show off the sealed copy. Look at this <laughs> sealed copy that I have here. <laughs> Look at this NTSC you want to have. <laughs> I, I know how much you love the sealed copy, so I thought I'd show you the sealed copy because I know it's your favourite thing to see. <laughs> but either way, either way, the theme of Donkey Kong Country, all the games really are pirate, pirate things, even Tropical Freeze, even the newer ones, they've got pirates in it. The last levels, on, on the original Donkey Kong Country game, it's probably the best um, music in the game. It's very piratey music in the actual level. You're a pirate ship. It's a really great boss to beat. And Diddy's Conquest goes on from that last part of the, of the first game. So Diddy's Conquest for me is probably the best pirate game that I play because I don't really play CFEs or anything like that. So I'm going to go with Diddy's Conquest. It's my question, but you've asked me. Okay, and uh, one that yep. no one's mentioned, Assassin's <sighs> Creed 4. Mm -mm. Yeah, uh, no, I, no. I, I, no, I didn't enjoy it much. That's what. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, no. Okay. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> All right. Um, anyway, we're going to get on to the next question. Slight tangent there. Uh, we have got question number six coming up, and it's uh, Stewie. Stewie, mate, what have you got for us? A wee question for your show, my friend. Uh, I'm just thinking today that there's obviously been loads and loads of Sega consoles up, up until now, and um, obviously they're probably, obviously, well, I'm hoping that there may be one in the, the future. You never know. But I'm curious to know if, if there was ever, or ever, do you think there, there may be one in your near future that you would actually purchase day one purely based on seeing footage from just one game? And for me, as, as soon as I saw Sonic Adventure on the, the, the Dreamcast, as soon as I saw the preview footage of that, I knew immediately I had to have that console. It had to be in my hands, in my house, practically day one. So I'm just curious to know if there's ever go if there's ever been a console where you based your purchase on only seeing footage of maybe even just one game. So take care of you guys. Happy gaming and have a great show. Bye for now. Yeah, thanks. Still the most cringy <laughs> guess that we get. <laughs> cringy? Uh, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say cringy. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you're the one that just gets a reaction all the time. I can't, I can't help that. Um, sorry, if you could just see the stuff that goes on off the, off camera. <laughs> what happens behind closed doors, huh? And I, and I can't, I can't record that. So that's just lost. Um, the question is, shut up, Toppy. The question is, has there ever been a game release that made you run out and buy the console? I'm just going to get it out there straight away. The most obvious answer to this would be Street Fighter 2 for Super Nintendo. That game just sold so many consoles. And I can tell you from first-hand experience that it was a major pain in the ass to have to answer all the questions coming in at the Sega hotline. When is Street Fighter 2 coming out for it? Mega? It really was, <laughs> it, on a global scale, Probably Sega's number one headache, not having that game on a Mega Drive. It was really, really bad. Um, but what has been, you know, that was a long time ago. What has been a system seller since? Breath of the Wild, Switch? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. Wii Sports, not for me personally, but everything seemed to go for Wii Sports when it came out. That actually, I think, was the reason why Wii sold so many consoles in the first place. I remember EB having Wii Sports kiosks before the um, actual console came out, and people were like, like playing them beforehand. It was lineups at E3 for that game. It's like, Wii Sports, really? It was good. I liked it. Like, I liked the tennis one, but I didn't, I wasn't right into it, but I thought it was okay. So I was just surprised that so many people took to it so quickly, but. I guess, but that's not my answer, but I just talk about Wii Sports. How many, I, say, I reckon the more important question is how many TVs got broken because of bloody tennis. 
Oh yeah, because people yeah. were like going like, <laughs> like ah! in the tennis part. I was actually really good. There was a part in the in the tennis part where you had to hit the wall and you had to like break it down. I was actually really good at that. It was addictive, but it's like I was surprised when it actually sold so many for that console. You know, what I mean? it came with it obviously, and so many people wanted it. It's just surprising to me. But do you know what? This the I, I bought a Super Nintendo not because of Street Fighter Two. I had my my system before Street Fighter Two was even announced. Um, I think so. Uh, I I'll, I'll, I'll... No, the, the game that made me buy the Super Nintendo was F Zero. F Zero. That's my. Oh. That's my answer. Sorry. <laughs> you stepped on my toes. Here. You knew I was going to say that, didn't you? You, you knew got, you got, say that. It's okay. I'll... No, that's my answer. That, that would be my answer. You said before, I know your answer's going to be. So you guessed it right, but don't worry. I've got a backup answer anyway. So I'll, I'll just let it go for now, but I'll go to last. That's so caught up in himself, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's right, like you're reading my mind. Right, it's right, like you're reading my mind sometimes. What is your answer, Toppy? Oh, well, I was going to say F0. But obviously, I can't use F0 for an answer, so I'll go something else. It. which is Move on. <laughs> on the GameCube, and when everybody was dissing the GameCube, it's like, oh, it's a kiddie console. Only kids play the GameCube. Whoa! If you got Resident Evil 4 exclusive for a time period, for a time period it was exclusive on the GameCube. And I was like, well, you know what? I've never played a Resident Evil game before. Everyone keeps saying that it's a great series. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I could go flex as well if you want. I've got the Japanese version. Biohazard. Oh, oh, Japanese version. Oh, oh, Biohazard. I'll tell them my story. So everyone was saying I was a kid's console, which I didn't care. I like Mario anyway, so it didn't really bother me. It was actually the last console I got and in that generation, and it should have been the first one I got because I really like it that much. To this day, it's still one of my favorite Nintendo consoles. It's underrated, I would say. Is well. Mike suffering? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He can't keep up with the rate of his speech. <laughs> he, he's, he's talking so quickly, it's like... <laughs> okay, so, so my answer is Resident Evil 4 because it's such a great game. It was exclusive for a time period, a small time period. But it got me to buy the GameCube, and I've loved the GameCube ever since. I still think it's the most underrated Nintendo console there is, including the Wii U. People say it's the most underrated console, the Wii U, but I think it's actually the Nintendo GameCube. <sighs> you done? Okay. Because <laughs> uh, if you kept you going, I was going to mute him. Uh, <laughs> happy gamers, what's your answer? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go back. There's obviously so many modern choices, but for me it was like the Mega Drive when Sonic came out. So I had the Master System and I had Alex Kid. Um, I just remember going around a friend's place and playing the uh, Sonic the Hedgehog for the first time. And literally the next day, went out with my mum and uh, bought that console. And it's my favorite console of all time. Mega! I don't know if I would have gone out Mega! and bought the Mega Drive so rapidly or whether I would have gone to the Super Nintendo if it wasn't for that Sonic the Hedgehog experience. So that was like the must-have game, the must-have so console. So hang, hang on, what about, what about... Die from your blade. Altered Beast. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a system Ru sound? Come on. <laughs> from your grave. I just, I just yeah. played, I played yeah. the sound effect. <laughs> I had to um, do it. <laughs> I that's actually my answer for a future question you got on here and a few questions later. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to strip all your answers because I'm reading <laughs> mine apparently. Um, you are, you are. Let's go. You're reading mine. System seller, go. You're going to be shocked when I say this. Um, the uh, the Xbox One for Killer Instinct. Oh, wow. Yeah, good? Uh, yeah, no, no, the, uh, yeah, I know. Now, because here's the thing. All, all the game, like there was nothing like for me for like, like so long, for like 20 years, there was nothing for mm. me that was like, Oh, I, I gotta go rush out and get a console straight away because sure. I like same with the Switch. Like with the Switch, I knew I was gonna get Zelda, but it wasn't in a zone where like, oh, I gotta, I gotta go rush out. And, I gotta go run down and get the Switch and Zelda because I knew I was already getting it. Reason being was when I saw the like Killer Instinct trailer at the E3 in 2013, it was like a massive holy s moment because Tapped you know we had your 90s self. Dude. Yeah, yeah, because you know it's been 16 oh, years since we had a. Killer Instinct game because you know how mm. rare it was obtained by Microsoft and, then and we thought <laughs> yeah they put it in the cupboard so we, because you know the biggest tease that Microsoft ever did to us was you know on the Xbox 360 you know the gamer picks where you had Folgore as one of the gamer picks mm. that you could use and mm. they teased us for so long we were all thinking we're gonna get new Killer Instinct new Killer Instinct never yeah. happened and then finally 2013 came out 
as soon as I got my Xbox, I, I got all my games. I didn't install anything <laughs> on that. I just like straight away 5245 for Killer Instinct. Yeah, that. And then a few years later, they released physical copies of it. And oh, I still bought nice. it again as well too. Because <laughs> I was like, yeah, I want to support them so they can do another one. But now, you know, there's been a lot of fans going, come on, Double Helix, do another one, do another one. But I, I feel like Microsoft's just given up on it, which which sucks. But yeah, that was my <laughs> game that I rushed out to buy. I had to get a console straight away for. Like it was the first Xbox One game I actually played. There was that. Is it a good game? Like, I've played it. Yeah, I haven't played it, so I don't know, but I actually like Killer Instinct, so really, if I go to Xbox, I'll probably get the Killer Instinct, so... Well, you know, you know, you know what's funny, it's also on Game Pass as well. Oh, It's on PC as well, too, you can play it yeah. on PC, yeah. Game Pass keeps coming up, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're, we're gonna get, <laughs> it up, every time. get a damn Xbox and Ultimate Game Pass to see the benefits of it. <laughs> Thank you, Stewie. Great question as per usual. And uh, keep the questions coming. I love your questions. Jude, oh, speaking of good questions, question number seven. Uh, oh, this one's a good one. Question number seven. Oh, what? Check it. Look at this. It just... <laughs> <laughs> it's just Lee. Themselves, hey? Question Who's number seven. Here we go. Guest, how are you? I hope you're all well. My question is, with the new uh, Sega... State of play, form of play, whatever the Sega event was. Um, it revealed that you could play as Sonic in the Tokyo Official Olympic Games game. Question. What Sega characters do you think also deserve a spot in the Olympics? We've already got Sonic. Who else should come? You're the expert. <laughs> who is going to compete against Sonic in the Olympics as a Sega character? Cheers! Normal Coca Cola. Food and yes, all merchandise is available on synthspaces.com slash merch. Shameless <laughs> plug. Shameless plug. Yeah, she's showing off the mug. She's actually bought two mugs off me because she smashed one. <laughs> oh. she's, using it, she's still using it though to, as a uh, as a plant holder now. You, so. must done, you must have done something to upset her. She's gone stuff this guy yeah. and just pushed it down. Nah, she was watching one of the episodes of the Synth Spacey Show. Oh my god, that top loader went shut up, bang. <laughs> um, did you have you guys played or seen the, Sega, the, the, the Olympic Games um, video. Yeah, yeah. I played it. I played it. And and, uh, I streamed that... it the other night. Sorry, Top Loader. Go for it. Sorry. I'm, 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 I'm not also <laughs> interrupting you, interrupting true. me. I, yeah, let's talk about the big blue costume in the room, and that's the Sonic outfit. I mean, does it look dinky or what? what? Is that the talk about? That's what I was going to say. <laughs> is, that the, is that the costume you're talking about? Because that's. I don't know. Like, I don't know that question, right? It reminds me of the first time we saw a Sonic movie trailer, and everyone was like, looking at that Sonic, like, oh, it's got fat. Don't remind stuff. me of that. <laughs> why me, though? Look at that. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe if she gave Altered Beast a go, he needs his moment of sun. He's got, he's got superpowers. He's got superpowers. How awesome would that be if you get the oh, Altered Beast costume? Can, can anyone else, the... Is anyone else wondering why is he yelling? <laughs> if, you, if you get the Alter Beast costume, maybe you can get special power ups as well as a bonus by getting that costume in the game. Because he can move fast. The Alter Beast, he can move fast. If you're doing a baseball, you can like, hit it even harder. He can have, use that winged whatever it is uh, for the high jumps. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you can Cheap. change suits into the different Alter Beast suits. You got the bear, you got the tiger, you got the, the beast itself, you know, the original beast, the brown beast, whatever he's called. Werewolf? Is he a werewolf? He's oh, a lot of things, oh, man. Sorry, Yakubu, <laughs> could you hear us for that last question? I'm so sorry. Uh, I thought I muted us. So the question was, what character, Sega character, should be represented in the Tokyo Olympics 2020 official video game? Wow, that's a long title. Um, I would like to see Alex. Come on, yeah. bring Alex oh, Kidd. Oh, I would what like else to see Alex said? Kidd in the 100 meter. Yeah. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to say that. That's why I didn't choose that. I was going to say that, but Spacey is for sure going to say that. So I left it to you. I gave, I gave your moment in the sun to you. So you can thank me later, which you can thank me now. <laughs> 
Wow. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I do, I do like the um, the hokey uniform though that they got for Sonic. I was playing yes. it the other night on the stream, and I made everyone in the Sevens rugby team Sonic. Everyone was yeah. Sonic. <laughs> I, I did that too. That, and then um, that's scary, isn't it? Having a team. Yeah, full of on, on my stream when when I first played it, I said, "Hey, everybody, it's since Spacey's in that Sonic costume." And then Cricket Master Tim was like. Paulie, that's not the first time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did, I did go in the uniform once. Yep. I had yeah, to. Yeah, I was uh, cold. Um. Anyway, so two happy gamers. Got an answer for this one. Kid Chameleon. He's already on a skateboard. Skateboarding's first in the Olympics this year. Why not? Mm -hmm. yeah, was there a skate? Oh, because the yes. Java, he's on a skateboard. Yes, that's right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but he doesn't actually have the skateboard in the game. I know, but still, it's like you've got your mascot right Wonder there. Boy. Like, maybe just take the cover up. The you original know, Wonder Boy. You know, he also came out the opening ceremony with the Outrun car. You know, Sonic sitting in the Outrun car or something. That'd be really cool. You know, as, if he need, as if he needs a car. He's already faster than it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, <laughs> laps, do the laps around the oval, you don't have to flag. That's, that's why the Sonic racing games don't make sense because he's already damn fast. Did anyone else notice that there was no mention of Nintendo during the opening ceremony whatsoever? Oh, no. No, there's, there's a reason there's a, why. There's there's, a reason why. Yeah, there was supposed to be Mario. There was supposed to be. I can't remember the reason why there wasn't, but there actually was supposed to be. I think. They pulled they out. Didn't. They pulled out. Yeah, they yeah. were relying on um late. They had they had Lady Gaga as part of their presentation, and it was built around her. She was supposed to emerge from a warp pipe. And there was oh, oh, that would have been oh I prefer to shoot her out of cannon. Yeah. That's yeah, just and me. She, she bailed, so they they bailed on it as well. Oh, oh man! Uh, look, look, I was happy to hear the Soul Calibur theme go off when I was yeah. at the opening ceremony. I was like, "Oh my god, that's Soul Calibur!" <laughs> I didn't pick up on that. They had Soul Calibur as well. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they that's, have a lot of ones, cool. man. Um, yeah. I just remember hearing uh, Sonic kick in yeah. and just thinking, Hang on, "It was a great moment." Yeah, yeah. It, it took me a, uh, a, a second or two to work out. It sounded familiar, but why is it in the Olympics? And then mm. it clicked. Yeah, it was a really cool moment. And yes, now Sonic's officially part of uh, Olympic history. History, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, no one else got any other suggestions. Toe oh, Jam my answer. Toe Jam I, my answer. <laughs> uh, I, I haven't said an answer yet. I was going to say... Um, this is going to be an interesting one because you know um in japan i, I reckon you could use the virtual fighter characters mm. like like a lot of the virtual fighter characters re can represent each sport as well too you, you got jeffrey and wolf for wrestling you got akira um you know uh what okay. you can use eileen for gymnastics and stuff like that virtual fighter characters would could represent each sport easily who's doing the equestrian a question I, I would say um you could lion use man. like lion or lion could best represent a question or, yeah, he or looks football. like a rich boy he would have yeah or, or football it. because you know why he was the original david beckham before beckham got that hairstyle <laughs> <laughs> so that's what i'm it. saying but the virtual fighter characters each yeah can each represent each sport that that that's why i was like man it doesn't get enough love that, that's why I had to bring that up. And that's why when I heard the sick question, I was like, yeah, that's a good question. I'm going to go virtual fighter. Everyone's going to say Sonic or Alex Kidd or Wonder Kid. Oh, sorry, Wonder Boy, sorry. Wonder Boy. Wonder Kid. Sorry. Wonder Boy. Wonder Kid. You, you can have, you know, like a crossover. We call it Wonder you can do say Street Fighter, really. We have the world wearing a type theme as well. Exactly. Like to, Street yeah. Fighter can best represent it as well. That's why I went with virtual fighter for the single one. Uh, Tojo Manel for synchronized swimming. Yeah, see that too. Yeah. Well, there is some probably Toe Jam running around those synchronized Simmers feet, so they're probably yeah, already true, in. true. Tatted Up Gamers is next with question number eight. Thanks very okay. much for that one, Jude, by the way. Uh, one thing about Jude I like is how energetic and excited and positive <laughs> she is in her videos. She's always looking like she's full of energy. Um, Don't complain about me, though. <laughs> Uh, you can go you too can, far. Yeah. You, <laughs> no, you're, 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 you, you feel like you're caffeined up every time. <laughs> the ca I'm caffeined up without the caffeine. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tanner yeah. Love Gamers is kind of cheating with this one. He's got two questions in here. Let's go. What's up, guys? Tatted Up Gamer Dude here. Uh, thanks for having me on. It's an honor. Um, my question is, though, you know, all three of us been been gaming and we grew up through the 80s. You know, we've been gaming for a long time. 
and you know we grew up with either you know some of the late 70s stuff all the way through the 80s the arcade era the 90s early 2000s all the way to now we've been you know been gaming for a long time how do you guys compare today's gaming to what we grew up on and so basically you know what's your favorite era of gaming and how do you compare it to to what we have now also one last thing if i can um in both both of you in your what's your favorite top three uh items possessions that you have in your gaming collection be it video games or consoles what's your top three but that's it thanks for having me on once again tatted up gamer dude out and uh game on You're gonna get these people sending their um their rooms. You can show it off in a YouTube video. Yeah, we're, uh, they're... guys, we're, you don't realize that while while the questions are being asked, um, we're just sitting there gawking and checking out your room. <laughs> <laughs> so his room is really nice. I like his room. Uh, that's a great no, especially fanboying over the uh, WWE. I'm, I'm a WWF person. This yeah, I am too, man. WWE, and especially, that was China showing. Uh, in yeah, the China and Roman Reigns yeah. in the background. Nah, we, we notice these little things, well, at least you guys do. And we're, I'm still checking out your room there in the background, by the way, too. Happy games. So, <laughs> I'll change the angle again after the next. Um... You've about three <laughs> angles now. Yeah, I'm very jealous of this room. So, Tatted Up Gamer cheated here with three questions in one. That's fair. First off, how do you compare gaming now to gaming eras in the past? I'm going to answer that. I would have to say that it's become more isolated but connected. That's the best way I can sum up gaming yep. now. It's it's isolated but connected. Where we're not, I mean, especially with COVID going on, that's not helping. Um, mm. I don't have a second controller for a lot of my systems anymore because no one comes over. I do it all online. So that, that's. It's sad. I do miss the days of pizza, beer, and games. Mm. It was just like a, yeah. a yep. given that you would oh. do that on every weekend. And you, you don't do that anymore. No. Um, yeah. Even if you could, though, with the COVID thing right now, it'd be hard to do that anyway. So I guess in a way, having it online helps in that direction. But I definitely do miss the couch co-op, of course. But, you know, in COVID times, all we got is online. So that's what we got anyway at this point in time. I think... Um... You guys would all relate that gone are the days where you can have a sleepover at your friend's house. So sometimes like, you know, back then you'll have one friend who has a Nintendo 64 or the other friend would have a PlayStation. Instead of buying, you know, an extra like console for yourself, you could just go have sleepovers and stuff like that. Gone like ever since multiplayer took over, there's nothing like like that anymore these days. People don't even do LAN anymore. Like LAN's kind of gone as land parties yeah land gaming <laughs> like you remember with the uh with the original xbox halo 2, halo 2. everybody yeah. would bring over the xbox consoles and TVs. And, then, and, and tvs even <laughs> so, man like you, you see your dad just getting the shits because it's like i gotta load this damn tv into the car to bring over this house and the xbox and stuff like that gone are those days like i miss those days of like you know land gaming and stuff like that Connections now with that because everything's gone online. Cool. Okay, connections come back. Okay, cool. Okay. Uh, top loader. One of the great things about the olden days um, is you know it's there wasn't as many releases or you knew about good releases now because we've got so many options you've got to miss a few things because so, if you go into any like a type of eShop type thing you scroll and you scroll and you scroll and there's so many options which is a great thing but the bad thing about that is that you kind of miss a few things too because there are so many options it's hard to um, really find something really really good that you go really like because you've got too many options to choose from back in the day um, you pretty much knew all the good games that were coming out. They're there on the shelf, they're in the magazines, and you get that now too a little bit with the online, like the websites, but still there's so much stuff you gotta cycle through, which is a bit of a downer because you've got too many options in some way, which is it's so weird because it's great you got so many options, but it's bad because you gotta you got so much to go through. So um to go to answer the second part of the question, what's my favorite era? I still prefer the old school era, but I still like now, yeah, obviously. But we can mix and match today with the um, retro collecting as well anyway. So my item, one of my favorite items, kind of mixes it up. Oh, he's it's gone got... straight in the... Yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go, okay. It's, it's yeah, yeah. new technology, 
and it's mixed with the old. So my Super Nintendo 3DS is one of my favorite items. You know, that I, have. I regret not buying that. I <laughs> yeah, bought, I regret not buying that too. I, I bought the uh, Metroid uh, Samus one, Returns, yeah. and that's that, that's an awesome limited edition. But then that came out a little after, I think, and I yeah. was like, damn, I maybe I should have got that. Yeah. But I don't know. I bought you're, straight you're up. Just, but you're just a Super <laughs> Nintendo fan. There, there, right? there was so, a time yeah. at 3DS XL, they were just releasing console after console after console. There was the Zelda one, there was a Yoshi one, there was Smash Bros, Fire Emblem. Emblem. It was just, it was was just a, a hard to keep up. There was a short window there where they were yeah. selling 2DSs. Yeah. Um, mm. And they were reduced to clear. And yeah. I missed that freaking window because now I'll go back. They've skyrocketed in price. Yeah, you can't have... find them. Yeah. My, I was lucky to get my 2DS for like $99 at Big W. When I was like, hey, is that still $99? The guy's like, oh, I think it went up. And then he scanned it. Oh, yeah, $99. I'm like, yes. All right. I'll take two. I'll take two. <laughs> Yeah, um, I love the Pokemon 2DS because my, we got it for my son for Christmas one year, you get the blue one. So we actually got it and filmed it opening up, which is great. So I just wish I got the, the yellow Pikachu one really looks cool. So I wish I got the yellow one as well. Yeah. But like you said, you know, I didn't really want the 2DS because I preferred the 3DS anyway, but um, I really did wish I got that yellow Pikachu one. I missed the, on that one, unfortunately. So yeah. to, for me to, because I was going to wait and get everyone to answer in turn, but I just decided to answer all three in one. Okay. Uh, the favorite era in gaming for me, uh, arcade era, hands down. Yeah, me, me too. I would like, the, especially the street when Street Fighter just took over the console scene. Mm. That was by far. That that will never be repeated. That will never. No, that will, definitely not. There will never think, be an era like that again. Do you think it's hard to explain that to someone who is not? Totally, used to that like now. totally, because totally. Yeah, they're, they're used to just switching on a box at home and all the games come up and they they can just download whatever they want. We, yeah. we were starving for games and we, we had to go out to the arcades to this place where there was about 20 or different machines to see the latest in tech. We couldn't get mm. it at home. It was when mm -hmm. the Dreamcast came out that that's, that, that started to games, sway yeah. towards home uh, being more powerful. Um, but seeing a row, 10, 10 arcade machines deep of Street Fighter 2s and, and people bringing in, I've got a photo um of street fighter 2 and this big fat dude playing it and next to him is this another guy and he's you can see on the table he's got the moves written out on a piece of paper and, and he's got it <laughs> and, and and he's got it there and on the on the machine that you don't see that anymore like no, no. That, that, that's commitment someone was yeah. so focused on wanting to play that game the best that they could that they wrote it down no one gives a shit anymore what yeah. a of fatalities, they didn't freaking um, give them to you. They actually had to work them out before they uh, were in the magazines. Before they were in the magazines. So time Zone yeah. in, in George Street had one Mortal Kombat machine at the very front. When you walked in, that was the first machine you got to see. It was facing against the, the entrance, so you couldn't see yeah, it. Yeah, it was in. like eye level straight away. Yeah. yeah, and so when you walk in, you had to get past the whole crowd. There was about five, ten people deep watching this one dude play Mortal Kombat and he was doing the fatalities somehow and mm. whenever he did the fatalities everyone was just clapping and cheering I've never yeah. seen that <laughs> I have not seen that on a game no, since no, it's no. just mm. ridiculous the whole group yeah grouping up and watch like spectating like I feel like the last time I've seen that um now that you mentioned the George Street time zone uh you know how opposite back then about 15 Galaxy years ago World. there was galaxy world playtime yeah i remember that like for tekken people were surrounding you know tekken 5 tekken it was, Dark huge. It, was massive. it was huge for fighting games it was huge because um you know back then you you said there was only one mortal kombat cabinet at that time at that time and then yeah. the, at that time and then later on they added like an extra four cabinets because everybody wanted to jump on and play it and yeah, they yeah. were like back then fighting games like it was insane it was just insane to look at fighting games like you had people spectating you as well you're like shit man i'm, I'm, I'm under a lot of pressure here man i gotta try to play good here and, and you know how cheap <laughs> mortal kombat one and strict Fighter ai was yeah back that's then. another aspect mm. that people forget yeah. when you play in a game you're actually playing and you got you look behind you and there's like five yeah. or ten people watching yeah. you oh shit i better not screw no, up here. Yeah, <laughs> you better not screw up here. and that, that, that's the thing i miss like even the good thing about Tekken was because yeah, Tekken had the side by side, so one one's opposite sides 
you got like mm. the player one and then you got the player two so it's everybody can yeah. yeah so everybody can spectate it yeah. Yeah, one of those days like nobody's spectating now everyone's like oh he's just playing a fighting game no, whatever no, they spectate but it's uh, it's called twitch it's not as, yeah they yeah it's, it's, it's more it's, spectating like oh we need to get up that machine so i can play the machine yeah. <laughs> basically what it is yeah. so happy gamers yeah. what have you got uh your favorite like okay so the questions yeah that that uh, was hijacked by someone here um <laughs> <laughs> how, no, do you, no, how do you compare yeah. gaming now to gaming eras in the past I love like retro gaming, but in all honesty, like for me, I, I love more so modern gaming for the social aspect of it. Like I did not have many friends as a kid, but now like through social media, like how, if we did not game us four here mm. and we didn't, we were not on social media, would any of us ever talk to each other? No, I probably no, not. No. It's like it's breaking down a game. lot of barriers. And so especially I love especially this guy. I'll do this. <laughs> so you're walking down the street and you cross the road to go around there. So what do you say? You walk straight past me, would you? You wouldn't say hello if you didn't know me? I would dodge. I'd walk around. <laughs> uh, oh, it's like, oh no, Pikachu hat man. Oh, shit. <laughs> so, uh, and, uh, okay, so the other thing is, what's your favorite era now? Your, your favorite era is now. My favorite era will be now because it's what my partner and I connect on. What's your <laughs> most cherished gaming item? Um, I'm, he did say to name three. I'm going to cut down the time and make it. One. Okay, I'm going to say one. So, and it's probably not the rarest thing. It's I've got this um, sealed Legend of Zelda um, for the Famicom disc system. Uh, that was gifted to me during the bushfire appeals because we did some auctions of some of our gaming gear. Oh wow! And we oh. bought something as well. And when we bought that lot and it arrived, this person had just thrown in this sealed uh, Ooh, Famicom whoa. game for us because they knew that we would appreciate it. Huh. So the the gesture of that and that's probably my favorite item in our collection. He's <laughs> got, got a stack waiting to come in this that high. One item. I'm cutting it down to one. My hat. That's my favorite item. It's game related. And I love it. It's his trademark. That's it. <laughs> it's his trademark. Honestly, my Super Nintendo was probably my actual favorite item, I would say, because it's just, it's like, there's so many memories there, man. I could go on, I could go on, but I'm not. I'd, so I'd just say Super Nintendo is definitely my favorite item. <laughs> That's the one I got for Christmas with the Super Mario cartridge. Unfortunately, it didn't come with the box, though. It just came with the cartridge, which Rapid. always annoyed me. Can you hear us, or are you just ignoring us? I'm ignoring you. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? I always hated the fact that they never, never gave you the box. They gave you the instructions, obviously, but they never gave you the box. I wish they had actually found a way to get the box in there as well, because the Super Nintendo version of, of, of Mario World <laughs> was only one Super Nintendo version of Mario, but um, the yellow box is actually hard to get because they mostly came with the console, yeah, so true, to get true. the yellow box is much harder to get now. I have two, but that's because I love the game so much. I just wish they gave the box with it initially. Um, <laughs> at this. Uh, oh, oh, damn. Yeah, yeah, the Sega SE 3000. Uh, only because it means more to me than what maybe it would mean to other people. For other people, this is just like, oh yeah, that's just an old computer. But I, I spent so many hours on this thing. And uh, I actually wrote my uh, Sega Times magazine with one of these. Actually, Ooh. it was the hard keyboard version that I had back then. Uh, and it was because of this I, I got the job at Sega, having one of these. So that would have to be my answer, the SE3000. Still works, a bit dusty, but yeah, I hate the keyboard on it. Um, Bully, your turn. The uh, first console I ever owned and played on. Top loader. The, the, the real top, top loader. The real top yeah, loader. Not this, not this <laughs> yeah, the real top loader. So, um, yeah. yeah I, I still have uh, I still have this bad boy, and the best thing about this bad boy was you can buy games from overseas, and they would work on it as well too. And uh, we got the uh, this is the proper proper original. You got the RF switch, as you can see there. Mm. And um, yeah, years of this this was as I said, my first console I ever played on. First game I ever played on was on this bad boy. I still play it from time to time because mm. uh, I, I always play Tech Mobile on this as well. Because you know who doesn't love Tech Mobile? Because um, the uh, the Nintendo Switch version, they don't have the official player names, 
That's the reason I always go back and play this every time I can. And, and, you, um, have, and you have to blow into the cartridges, I guess, because it will play it all right. Yeah, the, it plays it all right as well, too. <laughs> and yeah, as I said, the best thing about I... this was you can... Um, we were shooting <laughs> out <for one>. <laughs> <laughs> Last question! Last question, and then we're out of here. I'm starving. So I am, too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me get to it. Question number nine. And... Oh, questions. There they are. Okay, it's Uncle Chunt. He got, he came in with this late last sure. night. Yeah, Chunty, what have you got? Yes, let's get this question going. So what I want to know is lockdowns, everybody's in them, right? You can't avoid this. We are all in this together, apparently. What I want to know is uh, what games have you been playing to kind of subside the insanity? You know, are there games that you're seeing yourself go to time and time and again just to kind of detach from what's going on or to lose yourself in? Have you finished any games recently uh, that have helped you get through what we're going through? I know I have quite a lot of games. So I, I've been working through my backlog. That's my focus uh, during all these lockdowns. So I'm just curious to see what everybody on the panel has been playing lately. And uh, hopefully you're all doing well during lockdowns. All right. Take it easy, guys. Hope you have a good show, and I know it will be. Uh, he's got the same to, we're, doing. we're not listening to his question. All we're doing is go, what, what games he got over there? What, what, move the camera. He's got, he's got the, the, um, move the camera. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the Bruce Lee game on Xbox. <laughs> so, got he <laughs> his question is, what games are you playing to get through the COVID lockdown? What's keeping you sane? <laughs> For me, just streaming in general is keeping me sane. Uh, yeah, I don't, ooh. I don't actually play that many games off stream nowadays because I'm too busy doing other things. Um, if I'm not working, I'm setting up for the next stream. If I'm not streaming, then I'm, uh, I don't know, really not much doing around here. You guys? I'm actually playing. A, I'm actually playing a different game every day anyway because I'm actually not in lockdown per se. We're in lockdown, but I'm an essential worker, so like I said before. I'm still going to work every day and I'm not really playing that many games through the week because I'm in the weekend, that's when we're in the lockdown. So right now, well, I'm on this podcast, so I'm not playing anything right now, but I'm playing something different every day. Last night, I was playing Mario Kart Double Dash on the um, GameCube. So it's not what I play Doom, Original Doom. My son's been getting into Original Doom because you can play split screen like core multiplayer. And he loves it. He loves Doom, the original Doom, so much that he's put... Like Doom Eternal poster up onto his wall now because uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> he's not playing that. He's not playing that, but he's got that poster up because it's still Doom, right? It still sort of looks like the old, um, you know, artwork or like upgraded. But he loves original Doom. It's a fun game to play together. So I'm glad he loves Doom. It's it's kind of cartoon violence anyway, so it's not that bad compared to what they're looking like now with um, the ultra realistic. So as I Phil, Phil, Phil Spencer once said uh, when it came to Gears of War, he goes, we want to go for the violence, but we don't want it to be too gory. We just want it to be like balloons busting with blood. And he goes, yeah. and that's what, that's <laughs> what he's... That's what he said at the Sydney. Uh, that's that's flat too, really, doesn't it? <laughs> 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 Uh, what's keeping you sane too, Happy Gamers? I guess the dog, uh, Doggo and your wife are keeping you sane maybe in the background? Doggo yeah, I'm cold. actually lucky that because I work from home and Beck's working from home now because of obviously the lockdown. So I get more human interaction than I did before. So, but um, honestly, I'm the same as you. I don't have time to play games too much, but I religiously will play uh, with one of my friends, Tubsick. We will have a game of um, the Master Chief Collection once nice. a week and just to catch up and everything like that and that is uh, been really good for my sanity um, i've been <laughs> i've been all over the place with what i've been playing but uh i went through like this year i think i went through playing super mario world twice so i completed Ooh. it twice ah. this year yeah i did okay. everything. star Perfect. star world star world and everything Re i deleted yeah. my game save on the switch restarted and did everything again what's, and, your, favorite, uh, what's your favorite level in um, star world what's your favorite level I hate them all. I hate them all. <laughs> Star World. Star Do World. Hey? Sorry? You know what I love the most that everyone hates in that Star World is the tubular. I love that level. Everyone hates I, it, but I think it's the best one. I, I, I hate it too. Uh, that, that's all I could say. I hate it. Like, 
Like to me, some people go, oh yeah, I finished Super Mario World. And then I'm like, okay, did you really finish it? Did you do all of Star World? I did. Uh, all eight hardcore levels and then make sure it became Autumn after that. They go, what were you on about? It becomes Autumn <laughs> in the Super Mario World. I'm like, that means you didn't really finish it. <laughs> Um, yeah, and the graphics what change in it. It's weird. Yes, that's right. Yeah, the Coopers, uh, they don't have shells anymore. They have Mario heads, which is a really odd thing. Mm. Um, <laughs> and yeah, lately, as I said, I've, I've been streaming here and there, like with retro stuff. And we get some engaging stuff in the chat as well. Like uh, uh, like two weeks ago, you know, I had to tell North Americans about chicken salt because <laughs> they don't know what chicken <laughs> salt is. And I'm like, man, Australia, we got chicken salt. That's the best thing for chips, efficient chips. And wow. they what what is what is that they all just want they don't know what chicken salt is wow yeah, no, they, 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 they don't, don't have it over there yeah they don't have it over there i love it they yeah. love i could go on and on about the differences between <laughs> the, the food culture here and, and there and yeah for me because i i didn't work for three weeks so the, the best part was um you know i got to stream wait, from wait, home you guys Sorry. are awesome uh we just had a dollar donation from an anonymous Jeez, I wonder who. I know who. I wonder who it is. Thank you. Thank you very much for the donation. No names mentioned. No names mentioned. Okay. Well, I think that just about does it. We're going to wrap up. What's going to be on your channel coming up soon, Paulie? Back for Blood because I'm going to be playing it with Madino and Goffioso. That's it. That's a very big sell. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. I, I, look, I, I don't know, man. Like, sometimes a lot of games, I'm just like, yeah, whatever. Well, whatever my viewers want me to play, they want to put me through hell. Yeah, that, that's fine. Um, A few weeks ago, we had a spin the wheel moment, had eight PS1 games. When somebody hit the redeem, I had to play a PS1 game for 30 minutes. And uh, my viewers put me through hell playing Mortal Kombat Special Forces, by the way. <laughs> which is the worst Mortal Kombat game of all the time. And yeah, they were enjoying my uh, my pain. And we had GTA Vice City as well, where the channel redeem was anybody can redeem a cheat. We put in about eight cheats, it crashed the whole game. And <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, as I said, Back for Blood is probably the main focus uh, for the next coming days. It's just, I don't know, I don't know if you guys have these moments where, like, sometimes you, um, I know with two happy gamers and spaces. Like, I know with Spacey, he's got a schedule of what game he's going to play for, for the week. But with me, I'm just like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I feel like playing this game. Hell, I'll just play this game for, for today and then see where we go from there as well. Like, I know Spacey changed last minute on Thursday because he did the Olympic Games on Thursday. <laughs> yeah, because no one was watching Fantasy Star. No one cared about it. So I thought, well, I'm not... It's because we all wanted to see Sonic costume uh, Spacey's uh, yeah. go for gold at the Olympics. So. So I'll put a shout out there to Paulie Kwan. Look at that picture. Very, very reflective, brooding photo of him looking at, I don't know, thinking about the fatalities he can't do. I don't know. <laughs> fuck off. Fuck off. <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> uh, Top loader. It's broken. Uh, are, you yes. working on any, are you working on any projects for, for uh, yeah. YouTube? Yeah. Oh, oh. Constantly, actually. So, just about the release, a so Super Star Wars guide, step by step through each level. For so me, t and I call it the top learner teachers, where I teach you to play a game. So everyone thinks that Super Star Wars is actually a hard game, but that's deceiving because it's not a hard game. If you know how to beat the game, it becomes very easy. So my way of thinking is, if I teach you how to play Super Star Wars, it becomes a lot easier to play because it's not actually a hard game. So my video is. The first half of the, so it's in two videos, the first half and then the second half. So I'm just about, re just about to release the first half, which is up to most isolate. So I'll be walking through and teaching you how to play the game to be able to beat the game. So it's not so hard for you to play when you want to play the game. Cool. Okay. And okay. <laughs> two, two happy gamers. Um, we'll be hopefully back streaming on Twitch this week if my computer decides to behave itself. But on YouTube, um, we're shooting a game room tour. So we'll be showing around this area and talking about the game room and like us as collectors. And I'm going to show people how to make some uh, custom game stands for their themed Xbox Ooh. controllers in a couple nice. of weeks as well. Oh, so okay. two videos coming wow. to YouTube and uh, back streaming on Twitch hopefully next week. 
Any, any any Twitch games? You what game you're going to be playing on Twitch? Good sir. Oh, shit, what game am I? Um, <laughs> oh, Sorry, put you on the spot there. <laughs> on, on, on Thursday we're playing It Takes Two. Mm. On Tuesday I'm at the end of The Evil Within, and then we're going to vote for what the game is after that. Okay. So okay, we stream yeah, a Game really Pass good. games because Game Pass is so good. You Have you thought loader? about it, Top Loader? <laughs> <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Maybe later on. <laughs> Not right now, that's for damn sure. <laughs> what so, so recently I put out a tweet saying that uh, I need to get back into achievement hunting. I had uh, a streak of 40 days without not having an achievement and i that was back in 2015 and i need to get back into doing that so uh coming up soon on my channel i will be trying to see if i can beat that record of 40 days without an achievement hello hey, <laughs> <young fella. laughs> this is the future streamer here he can't hear you because i got the earphones on uh, just tell him he's a future streamer he's a future youtube star so ask if you're a stream in the future oh, yeah. Yeah. No, yes, don't run away. Hiding, don't run away. hiding behind dad. <laughs> <laughs> and, all right, on that, <laughs> on that note, we'll leave it at that. My name has been Brian and I've been gaming since Spaceys. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye now. Bye-bye. <laughs>